Tokyo Tower Boeing Alpha Sierra 747 at runway 22 ready for takeoff departure to the east. Boeing Alpha Sierra 747. training. I'm your instructor, Captain Molina, but you can just call me Jess. This session, we'll get started with some basic controls. Sound good? First things first, let's get familiar with your surroundings. Don't worry. I've got the stick while you get your bearings. Out your side windows, you can see we have great visibility over Sedona today. This is Red Rock Territory. Beautiful, isn't it? Time to fly this bird. 
The first control on our training list is the yoke. I still remember my first instructor saying the yoke is like a steering wheel. Almost. Sure, you can turn, but you can also pitch. For starters, it controls the ailerons. And the ailerons, they allow the plane to roll and bank into turns. Go ahead and try rolling to the right. Nice. Now let's see you level back out. Good. Of course, the yoke also controls the elevator. And the elevator affects the plane's pitch, right? Pull back on the stick, the plane starts to climb. Give it a shot. The most valuable things in aviation are speed and altitude. But notice, when you're pitching up, your speed is decreasing. You could add more power. Or for now, let's just pitch down. Just like that, your speed's picking up again as the nose pitches down. As you level back out, let's talk about another control, the rudders at your feet. Rudder pedals control the aircraft's side-to-side -side movement, also known as yaw. On the ground, those pedals are going to steer the plane left or right. Up here, they properly align us during turns. Try them out and watch the plane's nose skew to either side. Simple enough, right? Before we go on, let's bring the plane back to straight up flight. Make sure your dashboard is aligned three to four inches below the horizon for a cruise attitude. Okay, the last thing we're gonna cover now is the throttle. If you have the need for speed, then the throttle's for you. Full control over the power output of the engine. Let's see what happens when you cut all the power. Surprise, surprise, our altitude is decreasing. This might be a good time for a piloting PSA. Always keep an eye on your surroundings, because nobody likes a low-flying duck. All right, let's go ahead and throttle back up. and as long as we maintain the same attitude, our altitude will keep climbing too. You're really getting the hang of your controls. Before long, you won't even need a co-pilot. Until then, if you want help with the radio or checklists or simply flying the plane, I'll be here. You can pass me the controls when you're ready to finish your session or keep flying. It is a great day after all.
Just like we saw outside, our current attitude reads pretty much straight and level. Okay, now let's see how much power the engine's generating. Check your tachometer. Looks like we're pushing around 2300 revolutions per minute. Combined, attitude and engine RPMs translate to aircraft performance. Which leads us to your airspeed indicator. Now, last but not least, check your altimeter. To figure out your altitude, you always want to read the small needle first. That's how many thousands of feet up you are. Then on to the big needle for the hundreds. With our current attitude and power output, we're holding a speed of 90 knots and a stable altitude of 6,000 feet. But that's about to change. Take the stick when you're ready. Pull back slightly on the yoke to raise the nose just above the horizon line. About two inches. Make sure you don't pitch up too much, or the angle will be too steep to create lift. And without enough lift, we'll stall. All right, go full throttle and start climbing. on the yoke to raise the nose just above the horizon line. About two inches. Welcome to the climb attitude. See how it shows up on your attitude indicator and tachometer? According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed even at full throttle, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Okay, before we go on, let's get back to a cruise attitude. Ease up on the yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Then throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. Nice job. We're now set up with the same attitude and power we had at the top of our lesson. Next up is the descent attitude. Start by reducing your RPMs to 1800. Then drop the plane's nose a bit further below the horizon. Thanks. 
I've got control now. Well done. There's an old saying I like, a mile of road will take you a mile, a mile of runway will take you anywhere. Taking off isn't hard, but there are a few key points to remember. First, we always take off into the wind, which won't be an issue on a calm day like today. Second, before we enter a runway, we always make sure it's clear. Everything looks good, no cross traffic. Go ahead and taxi into position. The rudder pedals should make steering the plane pretty easy. Let's do this. Apply full power and I'll walk you through the takeoff as we go. Use your rudders to stay on the center line and keep pushing power until you reach 55 knots. Good. Now gently pull back on the yoke. Line up the top of your instrument panel so it's a couple inches above the horizon. That'll pitch us up and set a good climb attitude. And we're airborne. Focus on flying straight. Use your rudders to keep the runway heading of 210 degrees. Maintain 75 knots and we'll reach our target altitude of 5,500 feet in no time. Straight and level flight. 
It saves you from constantly pushing or pulling on the yoke. And that gives you more time to enjoy the ride. If you want more practice using the trim, go for it. Whenever you're ready to pass the controls, I'll be here. instructor used to say the best part of flying is landing in one piece. The man was a terminal pessimist, but he wasn't wrong. Today, you're in charge of bringing us in for a safe landing. We've got clearance for a straight-in approach, so we don't have to complete the standard traffic pattern. And I've already set us up in landing configuration at 65 knots with 10 degrees of flaps and idle power. We're on the glide slope now. Maintain speed around 65 knots, change your pitch if you need to, and keep your aim point on the runway number. When you're targeting the runway number, you want to keep it steady in your sights. If it looks like the number is moving up in your windscreen, you're coming in low. You'll need to add a bit more throttle to get back on the slope. If it looks like the number is moving down in your windscreen, well, then you're too high. You'll need to add flaps to increase your rate of descent, but you'll also need to push forward and trim to change your attitude and maintain the same speed. threshold. When you're 10 feet above the runway, it's time to flare. Once we pass the threshold, shift your aim point to the end of the runway. Then, pull back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. Okay, we're past the threshold. Start the flare. Keep pulling back slowly. Let the plane settle onto the runway. Don't push it down, but don't let it start climbing. Nice. Now apply the brakes to slow us down and bring the plane to a stop. Great job. As they say, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing. But if you can use the plane the next day, it's outstanding. Landings can be hard, even for seasoned pilots. Trust me, don't hesitate to practice. After all, that's what we're here for, right? Let's be honest, no one likes going around in circles, unless you're a pilot training on traffic patterns. Sedona's standard traffic pattern follows a 1,000 foot altitude around the main runway. By the time we're through here, you'll know how to complete the full run from takeoff to landing. So let's get started.
When we're up, keep us aligned with the runway and climb to 5,400 feet. We're going for a left-hand traffic pattern. altitude. You're going to start turning left 90 degrees toward a 122 degree heading. Okay, we're in the pattern. Get ready to enter the crosswind section. Good. Keep going till you reach the traffic pattern altitude of 5,700 feet. Ready to make your left turn downwind? When the runway appears at the halfway point of your wing strut, you'll know you're at a good glide distance. track. Lower your nose to a cruise attitude and reduce power to 2100 RPMs. Once your speed is in the white arc, add 10 degrees of flaps to prep us for landing. Now's not a bad time to check if the runway is looking good. And it probably goes without saying, always watch out for other planes entering or exiting the pattern. We're gonna fly past the end of the runway here. Keep going until you see it at a 45 degree angle behind you. That's your cue to turn left again onto the base leg.
job. As an old instructor said to me, not only did you not die, you're really learning to fly.
Great job. There's always room for improvement, that's life, right? But you did it all on your own. Hmm, you weren't really supposed to land there. You're on your way to becoming one hell of a pilot. I've always said, flying is freeing. Open skies, endless possibilities. But to fully enjoy it, you need to be prepared. We're going to focus this lesson on navigation prep and procedures, the fundamentals of getting from point A to point B. Step one, putting some distance between us and the ground. Sometimes you deviate, 
but if you track the time flown from your last known position, you'll always have at least a range for your current position. We all know speed can increase or decrease depending on the wind. That's why at your next waypoint you'll want to compare your estimated time en route with the actual time flown. Validate your estimate and your progress. Runway 21, and we'll call this one done.
VFR flight in the books. Not bad. Not bad at all. Kennedy Tower Boeing Alpha Sierra, 747 at runway 31, left ready for takeoff departure to the east. Boeing Alpha Sierra, 747 cleared for takeoff runway 31, left departure to the east approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 31, left Boeing 747.
Hawk 5732, Boeing 747. Boeing 747, radar contact 2 miles south of LaGuardia, 7,600 feet. Altimeter 290, decimal 92. Copy Boeing 747. Center Boeing Alpha Sierra, 747 is type Boeing B-748. Request flight following. Boeing Alpha Sierra, 747 Gander Center. Squawk 6463. Squawk 6463 Boeing 747. Boeing 747 radar contact 9200 feet. Altimeter 2 Niner Decimal Niner 2. Copy Boeing 747. Kennedy Tower Boeing Alpha Sierra, 747 ready for west departure at runway 31 left. Boeing Alpha Sierra, 747 cleared for takeoff runway 31 left west departure approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 31 left Boeing 747.
Alpha Sierra, 747 frequency change. New York approach Boeing Alpha Sierra, 747 is type Boeing B-748, three miles west of Kennedy. Request flight following. Boeing Alpha Sierra, 747 New York approach. Squawk 0232. Squawk 0232, Boeing 747. Boeing 747 radar contact 4 miles northwest of Kennedy, 4,100 feet. Altimeter 29er, decimal 9 2. Copy Boeing 747. New York approach Boeing Alpha Sierra, 747. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. Boeing Alpha Sierra, 747 New York approach. Cleared through the Bravo airspace. Cleared through Bravo airspace, Boeing 747. Boeing 747, you are leaving my airspace. Resume long navigation. Contact New York Center on 121.125. One two one decimal one two five for Boeing seven four seven. New York Center Boeing Alpha Sierra seven four seven eight thousand one hundred feet. Boeing Alpha Sierra seven four seven New York Center continue as planned. Altimeter two nine or decimal nine or two. Cessna X-Ray Golf Sierra.
Amsterdam Center Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra is type Cessna C-704 4 miles northwest of Echo Hotel Bravo Uniform. Request flight following. Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra Amsterdam Center. Squawk 7567. Squawk 7567 Cessna X-Ray Golf Sierra. Cessna X-Ray Golf Sierra Radar Contact. Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra skip hall approach. Cleared through the Charlie airspace. Cleared through Charlie airspace Cessna X-Ray Golf Sierra. Skip hall tower Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra Stall. is 3 miles east with Quebec to land. Stall. Stall. Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra Skip Hall Tower. Make straight to runway 27. Altimeter 2 Niner, decimal Niner, 2 wind 270 at 17. Cessna X-Ray Golf Sierra cleared to land runway 27. Follow the Cessna C-700 on final. Wind 270 at 17. Cleared to land runway 27 Cessna X-Ray Golf Sierra.